it must feel special to be part of the first group of Apple Originals. Like, uh, what's what's that feeling like to to be a pioneer in this space for them? Uh, you know, it's really, really, really exciting. We weren't the first show that Apple bought, but we were the first show to roll camera for them. Did you know that? I didn't. Yeah, we were the first show to roll camera, so it's been special from day one. Yeah. And, you know, now that we're out promoting and I realize, oh, my goodness, we're part of the first group, it feels it feels epic. Yeah. I mean, Ron, you, you've been on uh, streaming with Luke Cage, but, but more recently you've been on traditional with uh, This Is Us. How... What's the the differences when you get into it as an actor to be on streaming platforms as opposed to traditional distribution methods? I don't think the platform is what I don't focus on. It's really about the work, you know. Um, if the work is there and the scripts are good, it really is about focusing on that, you know. And then afterwards, you start to realize what platform and who sees what and, and where and what have you. So it's it's nice to have more opportunities now that we have, you know, Apple and other channels that are giving more diverse, diverse stories. So um, yeah. that feels really good from where I come from, from tradition where it was just limited ABC, NBC, CBS, <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And now to have these other platforms to have a diversity is really wonderful. To be, I'm so glad to be a part of that. I was talking to Makai and Michael and it was like, they look behind the monitors, there's so many women behind yeah. the monitors and, <laughs> yeah. and this thing. And we've been in this era of, uh, you know, where we've just been discussing women mm -hmm. empowerment and you've been a part of this, this movement. Mm -hmm. but how, do, how do you, where do you see that going for? Like, what's the next steps you would like to see uh, where women are, are getting more of these opportunities and, and so forth? I love all the creative opportunities. I'd love more opportunities in the, in the executive ranks. I think that that is the next step and that's um, the more women who can green light things. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the next step that we all hope for. You, you also, you know, you're a showrunner out here, but you've been a, a writer in the mm -hmm. past. And when you have a, when you have a service where people are, are binge watching uh, a show, does, is the writing different than when you go back to when there was three networks and you had to wait every week? Is, right. it, is there a different form of writing when you're writing for binge watch audiences, so to speak? You know, the only way that that affected the writer's room is that we, we had an idea that it might possibly be the first three. Somehow or another, we got a hold of data that people well, if they get through the first three, then they're going to stay with you. Yeah. So we just really needed the first three episodes to set the emotional stakes for everybody on the show. Okay. What's the perks of this? Do you, I mean, do I get like free iPads? Do y'all not, <laughs> not have to wait online for the Genius Bar and make Genius Bar appointments? There's it, got to be something that Apple is hooking up oh, for you guys. Yeah, like, the, <laughs> Apple is very, very generous in yeah. every way. Yes, they are. I would say the same. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. a lot of little perks, man, of course, man. And they make it, they make, they're beautiful. They're beautiful in that way. Yeah. 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 Last question I have to ask is like, there's been so much talk around casting these days of mm -hmm. British actors versus uh, <coughs> American actors, especially for black actors. Mm -hmm. And this one with Makai and Michael and, mm -hmm. and Ron, it's a lot of American uh, mm -hmm. great black actors. And w what do you think is the, the the push for, I mean, why do you think there, there's been so many uh, British actors getting more dramatic roles in some in some movies than American actors. So, as, I mean, as a producer, what what do you think the casting has seemed to lean that way? At least, the you know, I'm not sure, but I just feel like the best person for the role is the only answer ever. And I don't think that we took into consideration whether someone was American or British. We just knew that these were the actors that we wanted for the part, and it just fell that way. Yeah. So it's just the best person for the role, in my opinion. And I think you got the best people. For, oh, yeah. <laughs> also, just real quick, I wanted to say there's an element that's missing that people forget. Traditionally, money has been sucked out of the arts here in America. So traditionally, you have more funding in the arts. So you would, most people think that actors are more prepared because they come from an artistic educational background, whereas here, so much money has been sucked out of the arts. Instruments are not in schools. We don't have theater programs. So there's a fallacy that actors are not less prepared than they are traditionally yeah. somewhere else, and I think that has a lot to do with it also. It's just a misnomer, yeah. you know? I mean, it really starts with early education and, and someone being seen as traditionally having that, where we have been 
lacking that. And that's basically a lot of has to do with the, all the money and funding that's been taken out of the arts. When I grew up, there were instruments in schools. Mm -hmm. You could take a music class. There were no more instruments. That's one of the reasons why hip hop evolved the way it did, because without instruments, they made up instruments with their mouth and things. So I think that's an element that we should continue to talk about in the future. It's a great show. I can't wait to see more. I've seen half of it. Thank can't wait you, to see brother. the other half of the series. <laughs> Thank Keep you. Keep on doing